my name is Craig Elliott. Uh, I'm an illustrator, fine artist, um, production designer, mostly in animation, but I've worked in live action and video games as well. Uh, and I'm one of the judges for this year. Looking at all the Spectrum entries for this year was amazing. There's so much great art. Um, you know, one could say it's impossible to decide, but we have to, and that's part of how it goes. Um, I think I use my like experience as a teacher and experience as like a supervisor, a production designer, an art director, to help me kind of cull the entries down to something reasonable. But it's difficult because there's so much great work in in this book. Yeah. My first memories of Spectrum uh, were really, I think I came upon the book as several volumes. I didn't know anything about the book, and there may have been two or three in the shelf, and I just devoured them and bought as many as I could at the time. And I don't think I realized even at first that it came out every year. It took a little while to figure out how this thing worked, or even that it was a contest. I thought, well, maybe these people just, you know, made a book together but after a couple of years like ah, oh, I get it and I didn't even try to enter for many years um, because I thought oh this is just too amazing and I'm not one of these people but um, I was definitely blown away the first time I saw Spectrum and have been ever since it's an incredible volume when I first submitted to Spectrum I think was maybe Spectrum 10 and uh, I entered one piece and I got it in. Um, I think I entered one piece because I thought, well, I'm not gonna waste this money because I'm not gonna get in, <laughs> and I did. So you know, there's a lesson to everyone else, like actually have confidence that you can do it and enter. Because uh, I was like surprised, I mean, what's this? Like I actually got in, they must have made a mistake. But no, you know, if you enter, you actually can get in. It's, it's a thing. Some advice that I would give to any artist wanting to enter Spectrum, uh, I think the best thing is to, is to put your best work out there. Don't worry about putting, you know, a large number out there so that you hope one of them gets in or um, feeling like you need to make a piece for every category or, uh, you know, you know what your best work is and edit yourself and uh, focus yourself on something that you think is really great and enter that or those things, you know, if you do have a lot of them. Um, but yeah, I would definitely not try to shotgun and spread yourself thin uh, because it, it doesn't really help in the long run. One of the things that I gained from teaching, um, I think is Keeping my, it's kind of like having kids for people who tell me, or people who have kids, they tell me, it's like, because I don't have kids. But I think it's, there's something about the, because you're often teaching younger people, not always, it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be a younger person. It's not about youth. It's about coming to the arts from a fresh perspective and seeing how people solve problems just from their point of view, from their life experience and everyone's different and I learn from that you know that oh that's a great new approach to like you know creating a whole new lighting situation I never would have thought of and somebody would just come up with something out of, or designing a character or whatever composition uh, all these you know and this is something about spectrum I notice when I look at the work I get inspired and I see all these great new directions and uh, ideas and it's, it's amazing um, how, in a way, it's very similar to teaching, looking through the separate spectrum. So one of the things that I do when I work in the film industry as a production designer is uh, make something called a color script. And that color script is composed of subunits called color keys, which are really just small, you know, if you were to do a color thumbnail of an illustration or a painting, you know, the size of your thumb, uh, sort of roughly not a finished illustration by any means but really all about getting the lighting direction and the color right so i take every sequence in the film which can be 20 or so um, and paint a couple color keys like three or five uh, sometimes more it depends on how much time we have 
of each of those sequences all in a row, like they're stacked vertically. And then at the top of all of those rows for each sequence, I, I just put splashes of color or really stripes of color um, that represent that sequence. So if you look across, it's like a, a barcode on a book, and, but it's all in these different colors and you can see the mood of the, uh, the story change just by looking at the color. Like, oh, this is a real dark, moody sequence with, with you know, just a few red spotlights here or there. Or this, this sequence is very happy because it's all pastel colors. And, you know, really it's an aid to reinforcing the story. That's what all the art in the movie really does. It's just reinforce the emotion of the story, whatever the director is trying to say. And it's a fun part. I do get a lot of questions in classes and at conventions and things like that. I would say the most common question I get is how do I get into animation or film? And that isn't the, it's such a broad question and it's not really the question to ask necessarily. It's to me, the question should be, how do I make my art good and, and appealing? And it, it almost doesn't matter where you want to put the art. Yeah, there's a couple little, you know, specific things that you need to do to show, say, animated film companies that you can work in animation. But that's just how you organize and arrange what you've done. What you've done has to be great. And that's how you get in. And that's really, you know, that question does open a whole lot of other questions. How do you make great art? But, you know, it, it is more about that than, you know, wearing the right shoes or, I don't know, you know, having the right phone number or something. You know, that can only get you so far if your work's not, you know, up to par. In terms of films that I really enjoyed or enjoyed working on, um, yeah, Treasure Planet is still one of my favorites. Uh, just because of how much rain I was given, uh, I could really use my imagination. And uh, to me, that's kind of the point of art. Like, why draw something if it's already there, you know? Like, and animation as well, because you can do anything in animation. You can just as easily draw something, you know, a building that flies as you can draw a building that sits on the ground. And why not do the imaginative one? it's just more interesting and that movie was just full of that every sequence was you know more and more open and uh, especially the planet surface um, there were like two guidelines like it had to be greenish and you know look different and you know I just I just started going off on you know using all kinds of uh, fun fantastic ideas for I make plants and languages and alien languages and alien tech and all sorts of stuff so that was a great movie to work on and still one of my favorites you know when i first started at disney i applied to three companies out of school and um disney ilm and dreamworks um gave me job offers and i just went with the one that paid the most because <laughs> i didn't really know any anything about the companies or you know what they were doing or anyone at the companies. Um, so in a sense, I guess I fell into it. it. I didn't even really know what I needed to put in my portfolio to get into those companies. I did have advice from a friend who was working at Warner Brothers. I've never gotten a job at Warner Brothers Animation for some reason. Um, I tried back then, but he gave me a little bit of advice and I think I did three new pieces and that was really all I had added and, and then I got the offer so um, that was in about 95 when Lion King had gotten really big and uh, DreamWorks had started um, so they were really vacuuming up a lot of people and um, so in, in a sense I got lucky but they must have seen something in what I could do I know that I could draw and uh, that's so to me is the basis of everything being able to draw so i guess they saw that they said well um, maybe we can mold if we have to mold this guy we can he's got the drawing and so that's what i would say if i had any advice to give a lot of work gets discarded in animation and film and in games and 
At first, I don't think I realized that. I thought it was more like illustration. You know, you work on one piece and you refine it until go or it's approved or something like that. And it's a lot more fluid than that. And after my first film, Hercules, uh, I had some great successes, like a lot of the underworld I designed in that movie. But then there were areas where I would do something and it would, you know, it would just get cut out of the film, you know, it's somewhere in the Disney archives, but it's gone. And uh, that is hard at first to, uh, you know, I don't know if, it, I don't think, it, I wouldn't call it an ego thing. It's more just of, it, it kind of hurts because you put this effort into it and, you know, it's like, anything you put effort into if, if you put effort into buy, you know working for six months to buy your first car you know and then someone steals it that's gonna hurt a bit and it's kind of like that you know people are stealing your car all the time but then you have to kind of get used to it and realize that no they're just gonna pay you to buy a new car anyway so because you're, you're always getting paid to do whatever it is it's not uh, you're not at a loss like monetarily necessarily so um then you just kind of shrug it off and have fun coming up with ideas. And I think you also learn, that helps you learn to be more efficient too, because if you put too much work into one thing, you'll become, uh, you know, it will become so precious to you. Uh, but if you put a lot of, a little bit of work into a, a more ideas, then you're more likely to get something, you know, that you like in the end, because they'll pick one and then, hey, you could, then you can develop that and enjoy what you're doing. My first production designer credit was on the star, uh, working at Sony Animation. Um, and I mean, I had worked as an art director briefly on a film that didn't take off, it, it sort of crashed and burned. Um, but uh, working, you know, in that job all the way through uh, was quite an experience because I had never worked at sort of the ends of a film. Um, the center of the film was, you know, I was always a visual development artist, so I would come in not right from the very beginning when the script was being developed, but at some point when they needed a lot of signs. Whereas when you're a production designer, you're on like very early trying to figure out, well, what with the director, what is the style we want to do and what, what even is going to be in this movie and how many people are we going to need to, to design all these things and breaking down all the asset lists and stuff. And then also at the other end, when you're looking at footage that is completed and coming back and comparing it to the artwork and to your color script and all that stuff. So uh, to me, that was the biggest change between the two is that you, you're you seeing kind of the beginning and the end more uh, from that point of perspective. Yeah. After doing my first production design work and first art direction work, um, I really felt like that was something that I you know, was kind of meant to do. I, I have a, like a great, a good sense of organization in my head. I like things to be organized. I like, I, things that are very abstract to other people, I find patterns in. And that's something that you have to do as a production designer or art director is, is you can't just put a bunch of artwork that's unrelated into a film and call it one film. That, that's just a mishmash. So you need to understand how to take any piece of artwork, even you know, in a photo or a, or a piece of artwork or you know, whatever it might be, uh, that say the director says, oh, I like this or I like that or I like this pair of pants or I like you know, that sunset and figure out a way to, to, to you know, draw it all together and find the common threads in those things and what, what it is that the director likes about those things and then create a structure that then everyone can kind of follow and use to create, you know, a forest or, you know, a town or a car or whatever it is as they're designing it so that all these things like look like they live in the same world. Um, and I think that there, that just tickles something in my brain that I really like to, you know, I often, right now I'm actually building a style guide for a film that I've been working on for two years. and. It's the same thing as gathering together the artwork and figuring out what the director wants and what's in the artwork and explaining it for the people that then need to make the movie. Uh, because designing the movie isn't making it. It's just, that's the beginning. That's the, the template. And then everyone starts, 
you know, 3D modeling it or, or drawing it or whatever the, the method of production is. Do I see myself directing a film? Uh, I possibly, yeah. Um, I do have some ideas that I'm working on. Um, a couple of studios have asked me to come up with some stuff. Um, it's early days, but I do have a list of ideas and some art, some writing, and so we'll see. You know, I might even just hire a director and be a producer or a showrunner or production designer again, or you know, make up my own title somewhere in between the two uh, if I don't want to do the actual directing stuff. Um, we'll see. Could be fun.